with the Indie Magazine Podcast. Today we've got Kevin Basset and Vintage, a hip-hop singer based in Las Vegas. This episode's another part of the series, accompanying the release of Kevin's new collaborative album, Flows. Enjoy. What is up? What's up, what's up, man? Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. How are you? Great. It's been a minute. Um, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, first off, I gotta say, I've been loving your releases recently. They've been awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm such a fan. I feel like I'm more... like I feel like I'm lucky to have gotten to collaborate with you because I feel like... And, and I feel it's like a few of the artists, especially on on this project I've done, but you especially, because I, I don't know you like incredibly well, but I just like love your music. Right. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, man. I, I definitely it's the same love back, man. You you know, you showed you showed great love at the open mic. So I was like, I you know, you're like, you're like this want, guy's too, too great. Yeah, I was like, this man is just like he just have good energy. So I was like, I just wanted to put that energy back out towards you, you know. I appreciate that so much. No, it's all love, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Yeah, I I just think what you do, it's like it's so modern. Right. You know, there's no other way to say it. I feel like what you're doing is like the coming type of music. Like I feel oh, like I- you're like on the cutting edge of what's happening in music in my opinion. I don't know if everyone feels this way, but for me I'm just like this is like the cool new stuff that I feel right. like I'm hearing before it like pops off. That is legitimately that's, how I feel. That's a cool, I've never gotten anything like that. That's, I, I really do appreciate that. Like I, that's, that's awesome. I really do like that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, gotten that before. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm surprised. Cause I feel like you you have such like, for one, your voice is awesome. Like I just love your voice. It has such a cool tone to it. Thank but you. for two, I think your sense of rhythm and your sense of discovering new and interesting rhythms, right? Finding ways to utilize them and to like make them your own is so cool. Dang, that's nice. I like that. I, I do appreciate that. I never looked at it that way, too. <laughs> I yeah, I'm I'm just so impressed constantly. It's like every time you drop a new song, or even if you like preview a song and you're like, it's not out yet, I'm just like <sighs> I want this like out so I can listen to it because I just love listening to it so much. Right. Um, I'm curious, how did you discover? Because you you've been really influenced recently, especially um, by Brazilian funk, uh, yes. funk carioca, funk uh, mm-hmm. How did you how did you get onto that? Like, what turned you onto that? You know what's crazy, dude? I was like, I think what put me onto the Brazilian funk was. I'm trying to remember because I think I was just on YouTube one day or no. Okay. This is how it happened. Okay. So I left my phone on Twitter or on Instagram and you know how reels it pops up. You get random reels that pop up on your phone and there was this reel and it sounded like this uh, genre. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but there's a big genre in DC called Go-Go. I'm from oh, the DMV. Have, I, yeah, yeah. I know Go-Go. Yeah. Go-Go is so, dope. And there was, there was this like this rhythm that sounded like Go-Go and I was like, Yo, this sounds just like Go Go, but I was like, this isn't DC. This is like in a different country. So I started looking at like the location. I was like, oh, this is Brazil. And I still like this, this genre in Brazil wasn't, I don't know if it's, con- I think it's still considered like Brazilian funk, right. but it didn't sound like what I was like. One, once I heard that, you know, real, I looked through this person's Instagram. Apparently, the per- person's Instagram I was looking at, it was like a girl that dances. For like an artist Mm -hmm. and uh because i guess dancers are pretty like famous in brazil like having dancers i don't know but uh i was looking through her instagram and then i found the artist instagram that was making that the song i heard in the background and i was looking through his instagram i was like this is an interesting sound and genre so i started going on youtube and i just started looking at music videos and just like the whole day i was looking at like music videos of this genre and I remember hitting up my homies. I was like, bro, I just found this genre. Like, this shit is crazy. And I was like showing it to uh my producer that I worked with, Lucid. I was like, bro, like, hear this. This 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 stuff is crazy. 
And then I remember just showing it to like all my close people I was working with at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, we got to do something like this. Like this, this is crazy. Like, you know, I, I love this, you know, like I'm not like really big. I I'm really big on like respecting cultures and stuff. So it's like, I wanted to still make it like super, you know, like very, I didn't want to take it and then say, oh, I made this, you know, right. like I wanted to take it and show like respect almost and pay respect and homage to like this, you know, hearing this. Cause I feel like Punk Brasileiro has like a lot of Afro, Afro elements, but it also has like just like its own vibe to it. It has like these Afro elements in it, but it has like its own, just you can't compare it to anything else. Yeah. I That's feel how that. I feel, about it. I feel that because so when you first performed it, like I loved your version of it specifically. Like I and, and that's one thing I love about how I feel, and I could be wrong on this, how I feel hip hop right. works is I feel like hip hop takes something that exists and reinterprets it. Right. Yeah. Like I feel like that is like you know how people say, like, oh man, that's so metal or oh, that's so punk. I feel yeah, like something yeah, yeah. being so hip hop is right. when it takes something and re-understands it, like reevaluates what's going on. Right. And I feel like that's exactly what you did, where you put it into a place that I just absolutely loved. And so after you showed me, I was like, I got to listen to his funk carioca, like his funk brasileiro. And then I looked through all of your stuff and you hadn't yet like released those songs right. <laughs> that were in that genre. And I was like, oh, shoot, like, what am I going to do? So then I started getting into like the actual like funk brasileiro and like started listening to a lot of that Brazilian music. And I was like, this is dope. Like, I really like these rhythms and I really like what they have going on, but I love more like how you reinterpreted it. Right. So I was like, oh man, this stuff is so cool. And I was so pumped because I love finding interesting rhythms. Like, uh, that's what's made me a fan of people like, you know, Jay Dilla, Nuja Bass. uh, Yeah. uh, Oh, what's his name? Rest in peace, New Jibes, for real. Oh, dude, New Jibes is the best. Yeah, yeah. New Jibes is amazing. You know how I found New Jibes is off, off of anime? Samurai, yeah, yeah, yeah. Samurai Champloo. Yep. I think we had this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Samurai Champloo is dope. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, New Jibes is crazy, man. He's so good. And he, like, the deeper I delve into, like, his stuff, the more I like it. Because I've, like, gotten to the point where I, like, I, like, listen to the rappers who Nuja Bass produces not because right. I love the rappers, but just cause I want to hear his beats and like yeah. how they were incorporated into rap. Um, yeah. and then like Tuami, who I think is like one of the, the best producers in that style now who makes like really right. cool rhythms. I haven't heard of him. I have to check him out. Oh dude. Oh, I'll have to send you some of his stuff. Tuami's yeah, really, really it. cool. Yeah. Do yeah. That. He's just straight up a beat maker. Um, and a lot of his songs are like a minute and a half, you know, just like short little snippets. But right. his beats are wild. I feel like he just takes it into another just weird, interesting place. Uh, same with, do you know Surf? Surf? That sounds familiar. Surf like sounds familiar. S-E-R-F. He's a, another Japanese producer. No, I haven't heard of him actually. Never okay, mind. okay. I'll send you his stuff too. He does it with like kind of a glitchy thing, but he finds like really interesting rhythms too. Like okay. his rhythmic sense is awesome. Right. Um, but, oh, where was I going? Oh yeah, so like, Personally, I'm always looking for like new interesting rhythms. Like right. I'm always like, how can we push the boundaries of rhythm to create something cool, to create something danceable, to create something just like really interesting? Innovative. Yeah, innovative. Exactly. Yeah, I, like to, I like to call myself an innovator when it comes to my music, because like at the end of the day, it's like I don't know. I don't like to I, I there's certain trends I, I you know I, I love and I'm like, oh that's cool, that's cool, but like I, I I try not to follow trends too much and try to like just stick to my, you know, what, you know, truly I want to put out. Right. So, it's, yeah. So I understand that for sure. And I think that's what's so cool because you're doing like kind of this song rap thing that's become like really popular, like the song hip hop thing that you right. see with like Rod Wave and stuff. But I feel like by adding those really interesting rhythmic elements that you're mm-hmm. finding from this other culture, you're taking it in entirely different directions. Right. Which is so cool to me. I'm just like, oh, I don't feel like anyone else is doing this quite in the same way. Right. That, yeah, I do. yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I agree with, I agree with the innovator thing. And it feels, mm-hmm. you seem to me like someone who's constantly like on the lookout. You're like, 
okay, I want to find like what's new, what's cool, what what's gonna like push the boundaries of art. Yeah, I, I've always been like that since like a kid too. Like I've always like just I, I always liked art that pushed boundaries that just was different, you know? Like I've always was listening to the things that people were like, what is this? You know? But like, you know, all the kids that that were big in the underground, like they just like they like to hear the new things and like not just like the mainstream things. Like all the kids know, like everybody that knows that's that that's hip with everything down there. It's like, you know, it's it's always something good. I don't know. I, I feel like I, I could find I'm I feel like I'm a type of person I can find beauty in a lot. So it's like even yeah. if I don't understand like the music or anything, I, I know I could find beauty somewhere in it. That's cool. That's just, like that's just me being so optimistic. I feel like that's just how I'm how I am. Oh, I love it. And it's infectious. It's it's infectious too, you know. I like appreciate that, yeah. and I love that thought of like, you know, even if it's an art that like in general you're not into, this right. idea of okay, let's find the thing that I really like. Yeah. And find out how to incorporate that more into like what I'm doing. Right. It just keeps your mind open, you know. And that's one thing about me is like I've been, you know, I've been uh, like I never lived somewhere for so long. I never lived somewhere for like more than five years, I think. Oh, no way. Yeah. So no more. Yeah. More than five years. I haven't, I've always moved like after five years being somewhere. It's just my childhood and how I was, how it was. And, you know, you get to see a lot of different cultures just in America alone. Cause the East coast and the West coast is like, I don't, I feel like it's very different. Like being in the, being able to see the east coast and how that was and then being able to go to you know be here it's like it's you can see the differences in a lot of just just in america alone Hmm. just the i you see a lot of difference just cultural in a way i feel like so where where have you all been like i'm just trying to just to like give Uh, out like a little timeline yeah so I, i i i was born in bethesda maryland okay i i was out there I, I don't really remember that too much, but I know um, I was, I lived in San Diego. That's where I started school Yeah, and I moved to Arizona. And then from there I moved to Maryland. And then from there I moved to Virginia and then Virginia. That's when I did my high school. And then I, I was in Florida for a little bit um, or it was like, it was only for like some months. And then I moved to, uh arizona and i was there that's like the longest i've been i feel like is arizona okay and then i moved here to vegas like just recently like last year right, right, right. Uh, in june and th- part of this is because i was in the air force okay and then part of this was because i was also a uh military um what is it called military brat is what they call it yeah 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 your uh parents were military yeah my parents were military i decided to do the military but it, I decided real quick it wasn't for me. So I just did my my time and got out, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad That's- you're out because of what you can contribute uh, to, the, to the arts. So, okay. Do you feel like that exposure to all these different cultures and all these different parts of the United States has really informed the way you approach music and the way you approach like finding new new things to do with music yeah i feel like it just gives me more of an open an open mind towards things because i feel like when i was meeting a lot of these kids in you know maryland and me and a lot of these kids on arizona it's like a lot of these kids they've been here their whole life like Mm. like i they didn't you know they didn't have like the i guess i the luxury of being able to see different places and stuff so it's like i i was able to see a lot of like you know i got to see like people that didn't have much money and then people you know with a lot of money you know i got to see different parts not just culture but like just like when it comes to uh economic economically seeing like the different just the different sides of everything so it just it really i'm able to understand i feel like a lot because i lived you know in this and i lived in that so it's like i understand you know so it it, i feel like it it definitely does you know because it it made me who i am today right and i feel like a lot of my music is just 
like pretty much like a, almost like a diary in a way. Not even, I wouldn't want to call it a diary, but like my life, like, mm. so it's like, I don't really like a lot of the things I talk about in my music is like real, like it's things I've been through a real life. So it's like, I like to put like what I'm going through in my music pretty much. It's like an outlet for me in a way. Mm, mm. Yeah. Do you like feel like it's a, a type of therapy or more that it's just like a way to express what you see going on around you? It's a way to express, you know, I, I've, cause, oh yeah, one thing too, I, I could put out there when I, when I lived in the East coast, I was really big in the poetry. My, uh, one of my aunts actually took me to a poetry slam and I feel like if it wasn't for her, I really wouldn't, um, I've been doing music. I would have been as creative as I was because I was a, I was a huge nerd. I feel like, like I was really into like video games and stuff. So it's like, I, it, if I never, you know, gotten taken to this poetry slam and got to see that, like, I feel like I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Cause it just showed me like, Oh, there's, you know, I can express myself. Like I can, I can, you know, I could, there's a, a platform for me to speak. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful. Like I, I want to, and I just started writing myself and it just kind of started with this me, like, you know, writing a poetry to women or like just different girls in school, like yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. You know, it's like, I just, I just enjoyed like writing. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to use this for, I mean, a way for me to express, you know, how I feel about things. Cause I guess I wasn't that good at expressing the way I felt. So it was like having music and having this it, it taught me that like it's okay it's like you can't express yourself and you have a platform to express yourself and music and poetry was just one of those things for me so you find music almost as like a way to communicate what's inside for you like music yeah, and poetry it, okay it, 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 it's like a way for me to communicate yeah for sure i guess mm-hmm. they you, you know how they say our artists are weird so it's like i guess they that's what they mean by it too <laughs> I like that. I, I've never actually thought of it that way. But the right. idea of like, we're just so bad at communicating that in order to communicate, we need some sort of art to do it. Because right. otherwise we're just like, I don't know how to get this out there. Like, I don't know how to make yeah. you understand this. So right. I've got to either sing it or write a poem about it or something, you know? Right. Yeah. No, you get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Uh, so growing up, like what, type of music was playing in your house and like was it i don't, I don't know what oh, was it so i man i grew up with a lot of like my mom she she had a whole bunch of like 90s r&b like uh cds like she had this whole mm. cd book full of like just r&b there's some hip-hop for sure like i remember clearly like master p like that was like one of my when me and my mom's song make them say uh like that was my stuff right there my dad was like really big into like uh what was it called um erica badu uh sade what's the name um uh what's their name it was a detroit a detroit uh group i don't know why i'm for having a brain fart right now an old detroit group i i, I love this group too oh man I'm gonna have to figure that out. I'm, I want to. I want to know. I can't remember what they're called. I'm trying. Oh man, I can't it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it was a good. It was a, like that. That right there too is like a big part of my. Because uh, I remember the um, Jay Dilla was a producer for them as well. Okay. Um, but like he played a lot of like, it was like a lot of Jay Dilla. Like you, you could tell Jay Dilla produced a lot of the music oh. that my dad would listen to. Oh my goodness! Tribe Called Quest, maybe. Tribe Called Quest. That was one of them. Or it's like Slum Village. Slum Village, yes. Slum Slum Village. Village Okay. Thinking about Slum Village, and then uh, the people that made Things Fall Apart. Uh, what's the the album Things Fall Apart? I can't. I don't know why I'm having a brain fart with this right now, but I actually had Things Fall Apart tied on my chest because partly is be it's like I grew up seeing that like a lot um just Mm -hmm. everywhere Things Mm -hmm. Fall Apart. That was like one of my dad's favorite albums things fall apart so a lot of like that like that soul like that hip-hop it was that soulful hip-hop i like to call yeah it's like it had that like that those jazzy elements you know do you know how jay dilla did it like those samples those jazzy elements to it like so i grew up with a lot of just like just like 90s r&b and 
just like hip hop like that as well. A lot of that chill stuff. It was very chill. Like a lot of it wasn't really like I mean, Master P is I wouldn't call Master P chill, but like you know, it, it was a lot of hip hop and a lot of '90s R and B, '90s R and B, '90s hip hop. That's what I like to say. Even 2000s hip hop was really big too. Because in San Diego, I feel like San Diego, is, their radio stations were fire. Like, oh, I remember, really? I remember the radio stations being fire because I would always, you know, I, I was really big into like Mike Jones too when I was a kid. Like, I remember making foil out of grills and stuff. Like, oh, that was yeah, a big yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Mike Jones, Paul Wall, Fun B. I was really big in the Houston stuff too. So I was like all over the place when it came to music. Like, I was just, I really liked a lot of things. I remember I would write, like, my own little raps, too, when I was a kid. I, um, it, it, What's the song that inspired me, too, is, uh, what was that song called? Booty, 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 shaking everywhere. That song, I don't know why, but I remember I made a song about booty myself. I was, like, five years old. My mom was like, no songs about booty. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was funny, though. But, but yeah, that was, like, music was a big in my, ch- like, in definitely being a kid uh like i would watch music videos all the time like um 101 and park uh on bet right and they would play the music videos all the time i remember watching just sitting there as a kid watching that and i remember my dad would be like you need to stop watching this because <laughs> i'd just be there all day watching music videos yep <laughs> Yeah, you already know how the music videos back in the day were. You know, oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah, no, I oh. I definitely remember. I remember the first time, I like I it, it, I was watching because I I liked watching music videos as well. And I remember the first time I saw like a Kanye music video. It was like pretty wild, and I was like, oh my goodness! Like this is crazy. Right. And had it was back yeah. when I think it was like graduation era because he had the the like uh, glasses with like mm-hmm. the slits in it. Right. I was oh, like. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, it was so like, it was just so impactful and intense. And right. um, I I was just like blown away and I was just like glued to the screen. And I'm sure my parents, were, I think like we didn't even watch that full music video because I think like my parents <laughs> were like, no, like this is way too crazy. And I right. was like, wow. Right. No, I feel you, man. I yeah. definitely feel you. Yeah, but I definitely feel like art was art was meant to be in my life because mm. it is always it it's like you said art is impactful in any way like just seeing things like just seeing like just street art and just seeing like um graffiti like i like to call it street art i don't like to call it graffiti i feel like I graffiti think- is like a, a, a like one of those I, I wouldn't call. I, I'm probably just thinking about it too hard. But like, no, I th- I think I think street art is a better word for it. Yeah, yeah. I like to call it street art because it's like I don't know. It's it's still art. I feel like absolutely. Actual. I mean, I feel like it's kind of like photography, where like some photography yeah. I look out and I'm like, oh, like this isn't super artistic. But then some I look at and I'm like, oh, this is art. That's how I feel about graffiti. Where some graffiti I look at and I'm like. Okay, it looks like you you didn't really care about this. Like you're yeah, just yeah, out yeah. with your friends. And then some oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can tell they put like effort into this. Even yeah. though it's it's still like illegal in both cases. I'm like, right, right. This is art. This is like truly art, you know. Yeah, one of my favorite artists actually, Keith Herring, he okay. was like you he was like one of those dudes in New York. He would go around and write his like uh, you know, his figures and everything everywhere. And um he would, he, you know, that was like a, such a big, like back in the day in New York, like that was like, no, don't do that. Like, right. he, you know, there's like videos of him going around in the subway station, like putting his figures everywhere and then like getting arrested right after. I mean, it's goaded. RIP to Keith Herring, too. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite artists, actually, till this day. I'm like, I'm so confused at the like, the police is like crack down on stuff like that. Cause I'm just like, right. there's so many like crazy things you could be worrying about. Why are you chasing around artists? Like, right. this is so strange. Yeah, you know? To, yeah. I was, I was somewhere and this guy was this like policeman. was telling this like story about how he like, they had this whole sting operation to take down these taggers. And I was like, mm-hmm. What? Like you guys, you guys put like all your like time and resources into stopping a few artists, right? Like if you don't like what they're doing, you can paint over it. Like it's not like 
it's Ooh. not the craziest thing in the world, but they're like putting all this in- intensity into it. And I'm just like, let this stuff thrive a little bit. Like, this yeah. is dope. Some of this is awesome stuff. Like, yeah, man, it's too impactful for them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. It's too impactful. Can't they don't get up. it. Yeah, I can't change up the uh, the script too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm curious, what are so I've noticed you putting out a lot of music recently mm-hmm. and like getting ready to put out like it seems like there's like little clips here and there where I'm like oh right. there's new stuff coming still are you like planning on releasing an album or are you just like keeping this kind of like single thing going where you're just like releasing like little oh, songs man. at a time I would love to release like another project like I don't want to call it an album because you know how that right. is calling things an album you know, I don't know it's the music's changing so fast now so it's like I'm trying to catch up to like the what's going on right now. I, I feel like I'm in that in that like all right, I'm trying to catch up, like what's going on? Like right. Because I, I I'm I want people to hear my music. I just I'm trying to find like my fan base, I feel like. Right. And that's what I feel like I've been struggling at lately. So mm. I really want to focus on really finding a, a fan base that I could push my music to. Uh because I I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 been hard lately because I lately it's been kind of like, dang. I don't even want to like. I've been like in a rut where it's like I can't. I don't even want to make music right now, or like just release music mm. right now because it's like I don't know. It's like I I don't like to let the numbers get to me, but I feel like after doing, I I can't be mad. At the end of the day, I'm seeing small growth, so I just gotta mm. I gotta be I gotta be uh grateful for that small growth at least and i i try to um but i definitely it's 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 sometimes it's hard when you just see people like I, i'm happy for like my friends and stuff like seeing people like you know they they started making music like two years ago and they're now they're like blowing up they're, they have like singles that hit 100k they're about to get you know they're on their way to a million streams and it's like damn it's like how did you do that like i'm like yeah <laughs> so it's like i'm like man like what am i doing wrong i'd be feeling like what am i doing wrong you know i i understand that sentiment so much i like it's weird because i'll have some people who are like (laughs) massive fans of what i'm doing right i'm like i appreciate this so much and then they put out music and they're getting like 150,000 listeners a month and i'm like what like what are you what are you doing that i'm not doing you know like what's yeah. what's like the the difference between what we're doing and it's weird because i'm like you're even a fan of what i'm doing it's not like right it's not like our music is that different you think what i'm doing is dope which is awesome like i love when people think i'm doing cool stuff but it's just like this weird feeling of like okay like what is the distinguishing factor here like what is preventing my stuff from reaching that same level that someone else's is. And I'm right. super happy for them. Cause I'm like, this is so cool. Like you're getting all this attention. Like a buddy of mine just got like, cause you know how like on submit hub sometimes they'll, they'll ignore like most of the things that get sent their way. I feel like, you know, Wait, submit, you, hub, what's that? submit hub is this place where you can submit uh, your songs to different playlists. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't tried that. I, I've, I think I've used that uh, like a playlist pusher. I, I called it. It was called playlist push. Okay. My um, I've used that once, and that's why ride with me. I feel like got so much attention because I actually it got on a lot of playlists when I did it. But for the return, I, I I try to look on things like I try to look at my music. Like now that I'm starting to get more deeper into it, I've been I'm like I've been making music for about almost eight years now. Okay. So it's like. I'm I'm looking at my music more as a business, yeah. but I feel like that's where I, I started. Like that's where everything started getting. Once I got a little bit too serious with everything, I was like, damn, like I'm like, I starting to become hard making music, do the art part. Now I'm like, so focused on the business part, like yeah. the art part starting to become hard. So I'm like, I feel like I'm losing my artistry, like getting so caught up in all this business stuff. Yeah. It's weird. I feel <laughs> like, I feel like that's been something I've been seeing a lot from different like artists I talk to where they're like I just want to be an artist like I don't want to have to worry about creating social media stories about like 
having to like constantly pay attention to this business side about having to make myself blow up. Like I want there to be some like partnership between me and someone who is good at business so that I can like reach a higher height. And it's so difficult because that's not what everyone's expecting from us right now. You know? Yep. You gotta, it's like when it comes to the business side, you got to show like, that's the one thing about the business side is they got to, you got to show that you, you have music that people want to listen to. And when you're not making those numbers that are, you know, or you're getting like a return on investment, a lot of people are going to look your way. Cause it's like, right. you know, it's, but one thing that I've always heard, it's like, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And when it comes to this stuff. So it's like, absolutely. I'm, that's why I'm so big with just networking and meeting new people. Cause it's yeah. like, um, at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm a people person. Like I like to meet new people. So it's like, it doesn't bother me to uh, go out there and meet new people. So that's why I try my, my best to just do that and keep meeting people because i know that there's like you there's somebody there's always somebody out there that's gonna like what you're doing and that's right. all that matters is the people that like what you're doing everybody else you know they don't like it it's like that doesn't matter it's like at the end of the day it's the people who do like it and that's who, who i like to show focus to that's really smart i, I like yeah. that approach um yeah it's it's crazy how much of it is due to networking and to finding like-minded individuals and to finding people who have like that sway. I feel like right. one thing that's I've noticed recently is I'll see people with like crazy good social media numbers right. and then they'll do a show and no one shows up. Yeah, man. That's all. Uh, and so I'm that- like, I, and, and like the shows pay the best, you know, like right. getting, getting lots of tickets sold is like, one of the major drivers of I feel like how artists can make money right now. Right. And so when no one shows up for these social media people, I'm like, what's the point of your social media numbers? You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, starting to become I don't know, this the social media now is like it's I don't know. It's interesting. I think it's because of the algorithm based things now. It's like it's everything's algorithm based. Right. Like, I don't know, you could have a hit song, but you could still, it's like, it's just everything's so fast now. It's like, you could just get, you could have that hit song that everybody's playing on the reels, but nobody will know who you are. Right. Right. Because people, people's attention spans now are so short. Right. It's like, they don't care to know who the artist is. They don't care to know who made the sound. They just, they're, they're, they're seeing the content. And what's in front of them, and that's it. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not I, really. I, no, I agree with you so much. It's like it's even with like playlist stuff. It's like okay, yeah, you have a song blow up exactly. on a playlist, even on playlists. Yeah, they don't care about your song. Mm-hmm. They care about that playlist. Like exactly. your song's only getting attention because of that playlist. So in the end, it's like, does it even mean anything? Because they haven't <laughs> taken that next step. Like if you only have one song that blew up from a playlist. That's not that valuable. If you have one song that blew up from a playlist and then a bunch of your other songs start getting attention, that's like the value. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because yeah. you, you want them to understand you as an artist. Yep. That's how I feel like that that's what I feel like the ultimate goal should always be, you know? But right. it's hard to get there. Cuz I know if I heard a song, a new song on a playlist, there's times where it's like I'm the type of person to go like look at the artist and like like who is this like this song is it the song intrigued me so much that it made me go to the artist page and like want to learn more about him but not everybody's like that at the end of the day and it's like i understand that so it's like i don't know it's it's all just it's just got to keep moving with the times i feel like if you don't it's like you'll just get swallowed up quick so it's like i as much as like i don't like it i try to stay you know just stay with everything because I know if like I don't like ain't nobody never gonna know who vintage is. Right. Well, and I feel <laughs> like you've done such a good job too at crafting your persona on social media. Because right. whenever I see an Instagram post from you, you always come off just incredibly smooth. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, this guy's like the epitome of like smooth and like fly right now. I'm like how is this guy doing it? And I'm like, I, I'm just inspired by 
the way you craft your image on social media. Right. Because I look at, I'm like, I don't think I could do that. Like, I don't feel like I'm, maybe that's, that's the problem is like for myself, I don't feel like I'm super smooth. And so I can't like portray that. Whereas I look at yours and I'm like, this guy's smooth. He, it seems like super presentable. It seems like something that's just like, like a joy to like delve into. Right. You know? Yeah. No, I, I feel it. I feel like it's just like the more, the more, the more you are yourself and just like really just, you know, the more confident you, I don't, the more confidence you build in yourself, it's like, you'll, you know, you'll find your, your thing. I, I, when I look at my page, like, I don't really see that. I've never gotten, I've never gotten that before. So it's like, I, I do appreciate that. So, uh, I never looked at it that way. I, I do. I feel like the big thing for me is like quality. Like, I, I don't like to put out mm. just anything. It's like, it's hard for me just to put out like very, just uh, like a low quality, something very low quality. I like to keep up the quality of my stuff. So that's one thing I'm big about. Mm. Uh, so I, I like to take the extra steps to make certain things look a certain way. So it's like, I feel like that's just, I don't know. That's just how, yeah, I, I feel it though. I feel it. It's, I don't know how to explain it. I really don't, I just do it. <laughs> I just do right. it. I try to not think about it too much because I, I tend to think about it too much. So I try to just do and if because I know if I think I'm not going to do. So I just try to just do it. You know, Maybe that's what makes it feel so natural is this like attention to quality and the drive to just like let it happen and do yeah, it as naturally as I, possible. Because last year, that was one thing like I over I was overthinking so much and all that time overthinking I could have been doing. So right. I told myself this year is like, I'm not going to get too caught up in the overthinking. I'm just going to like do. Mm. I've been lately, I've been like falling off of it. Cause like lately I've been in just like, I've been like, man, like, you know, it's just, you know, work and then, you know, tr- being an artist as well. And then I got other things I love doing too. So it's like trying to balance that with my music. It's like, it's hard, man. Like it's I tough. like to do a lot of stuff. I like to do a lot. And it's I totally like, understand. Once you start, you know, doing more in this, then the music or whatever else it is is gonna it's gonna take away from that. So it's like I try to balance as much as possible, but man, that's just hard. Not gonna lie, it ain't it ain't the easiest. But I'm, I'm practicing becoming better at it. Yeah, yeah, it's like a constant effort and like trying to make sure you have enough money to keep up making yeah. something great. You know. Exactly. And to be part of the community, you know, because right. you don't want to miss out on that chance to, like yeah. you said, go out and connect with new people. But Impressive. work things can get in the way of that, like different things in life and different interests mm-hmm. can get in the way of just like going out and connecting with real people, which, like exactly. you said, is like one of the most valuable parts of the whole thing. Yep. So, yeah, it's just all about that, man. Just trying to figure out, trying to balance everything and stuff. But, you know, I feel like I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing. And, you know, keep doing me, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, as long as I'm seeing small growth, like I'm happy. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, it's growth, you know? Yeah. And, and even if it's small, it's like, you're doing something is you just got to keep working towards it because you never know when your life will change. And you got to think that way. You got to think that way because you just got to keep doing. So you're ready for that moment. You know? Right. I feel like that's a big thing. Just keep doing and, you know, you'll, as long as you keep doing, you're going to be ready for that moment because you're still doing, you know, you're getting those reps in. Even if you're not getting those results that you want, like right then and there, you're getting those reps in, I feel like. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And, and, and that way, when the opportunity does strike, you're ready and you can exactly. make it happen. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I've been trying to, I've been trying to live by that. You know, shout out to my boy, Dominic Lewis. He's our... He doesn't go by Dominic Lewis anymore. He keeps changing his goddamn name. Dominic outside, Dom outside. <laughs> yeah. Shout out well, to Dom outside. Because he's the one that, you know, he he did put he he did tell me that, you know, he did remind me of that, I feel like. You know, yeah. so I was like, damn, you're right. I gotta get those reps in. You know. Even when I'm in that rut of not wanting to, you know, make music or not wanting to be in that, you know, you just gotta do it. You gotta you gotta get those reps in. Yeah. Well, uh i feel like that's a great place to end it on it's just keep working so uh great talking to you man it's been a pleasure always always great to catch up with you 
I hope oh, yeah, to see you just, soon at shows out in town. I just want to say, yeah, just I just want to say I appreciate you uh, for doing this because it definitely inspired you know inspires me to keep doing what I'm doing and stuff because there's you know there's actual people watching. I feel like getting so caught up in the work, like you forget people are actually like you're you're actually inspiring people. You're actually you know like you're making an impact. So it it was ni- a nice reminder, man. I do appreciate that. And then you know doing what you're doing for the community too is like it's awesome, man. Keep doing what you're doing. And then also Photogenic, the new EP is out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so we're putting out a full... I'm putting out a full album, actually, this oh, Monday that, that that's going to be on, that like all the stuff's going to be on. Uh, so Photogenic has Burning Away and Photogenic. I released Hell those at the yeah. same time just because I was like, man, it's Valentine's Day. Right. And I feel like Burning Away was such a great love song. And right. then I had Photogenic, which was a great love song. So I was like, I don't know which one I want to put out. So I was just like, I guess I'm just going to do both. Because like, they're both like super endearing and adorable yeah. to me. Um, they work, man. Yeah, and I feel like they're just really good companions. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I've got the full album actually coming out. It, this podcast will come out after the fact. But it's coming out this that Monday because it's my grandma's birthday and she's a huge hip-hop fan. Oh, happy so, birthday to grandma for real. I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's 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 like it's kind of dedicated to her. She's also like a massive fan of piano. So that's why oh, a lot I of the it. songs have like that really piano focus going on. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love how you did that for your grandma. I mean, that's 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 love right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It's weird. I feel like it's it's not common that someone's grandma will push them to do more and more rap, but right. she has definitely been like on me like hey, like, like every time I rap in any bit in a song, she's like, oh, you got to do that more. Like, that's, that's the stuff. It's so talented. And she's so impressed by people in the hip hop community. So I'm just like, I got to, I got to do one for her, you know? Right. I love that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for Can't sure. Can't wait to hear it. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I'm super excited for it to release. Um, and I'm super excited that we got to work together on a song. It's awesome. I hope to do, I, I, I want to do, even more kind of in the direction that you're going to like, oh, you know, in sure. my own way. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely, you're definitely someone I want to hit up for future things and to, to work more with. Cause I think you're just excellent and I'm very for excited. Sure. I with appreciate everything that. You do. I mean, it would definitely have to work more for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but great talking to you. It was nice great talking interacting. to you as well. Yeah. Uh, and I hope, I hope that just like tomorrow all your stuff blows up because I want everyone else to like listen to it. And that's what right. that's part of the reason I like try to repost your stuff whenever I like see you have a new song. Cause I'm just mm-hmm. like, I want everyone else to jam out to this too, so we right. can all dance together and just like <laughs> vibe out to this music because I think it's so sick. Right. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you have a great, uh, great day, man. Yes, yeah, so likewise, man. Okay. Have a good night, a good day. Yeah, I'll catch you later. All right, peace. Bye. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with friends who enjoy music, movies, and TV. We'll be back with another episode from this series soon where Kevin sits down with Shikati. Until then, listen to good music. Music.